Hey guys, so to this afternoon, uh, I'm going to be talking to you about server scaling on Node.js. So there are a couple limitations with the way that we have our basic Node.js apps right now. And we can actually address these pretty easily um, without npm installing anything. So this is actually already built into Node. And you can do this into pretty much this afternoon if you wanted. It's really easy. So let's just talk about uh, a couple of limitations that we have so far. So here's your project, your stackathon. It's awesome. Everybody wants to, you know, come and look at it. And you have all these different, like, tons of HTTP requests coming in all of a sudden. And your server can't handle it. So, because you only have, by default, Node is single-threaded, it's uh, asynchronous, but it can only handle so much at once. Second bottleneck, you have some like really computationally expensive endpoint. Um, and your API is doing a lot of like maybe image processing or something, um, some other algorithm that's running, and it's gonna hold up a lot of the further HTTP requests that are coming in because it's waiting for this to return because it's blocking. So that's another bottleneck that we can address. And the third bottleneck, maybe it's literally a bottleneck. <laughs> On your server, it just goes down. You can't do anything about it. You've got to restart the whole thing. So that takes time. So we can actually address this issue as well. Uh, well, actually, let me rephrase it. If it's all in one machine, maybe this situation doesn't actually, you can't actually resolve it with the way I'm going to tell you. But abstractly, you know, if, if a version um, of your server goes down, um, there's a way to build some resiliency into your programs. So here again, just to review the three bottlenecks we have. High number of requests. By default, we have a single-threaded process that's going to block when, and just have a lot of issue processing it. Node does pretty well with concurrency since it actually farms out a lot of, as we learned, the, like the I.O. operations, which are slow. It puts in the event loop, and that's handled by some threaded database, possibly. Um, but that's at like the OS level. At the JavaScript level, you still have that single thread, um, which again, in the computationally slow endpoint, you're going to run into that limit. So, and server failure. We, when it's single thread, single process, and it goes down, there's no backup for it. Again, just to reiterate, we have um, a single thread process, but we have these nice expensive laptops here that you know we spent a lot of money on, and we bought all these eight cores then we want to be able to take advantage of it. Because if you actually run a node process and you fire up your activity monitor, you're going to find actually that only one of your CPUs is running at full tilt if it's you know, continuing churning. Um, and again, it's not like web apps servers necessarily are like just grinding away 100% like CPU power. Because you're mostly processing HTTP quests, and you're not doing anything crazy like a big compute. But you might. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, so let's just talk really quickly. That's my little animation. Uh, concurrency versus parallelism. And it's a little bit of a technicality, but technically correct is the best kind of correct. Um, so here we have two processes. On the left, we'll, talk, we'll see them running in concurrently, as Node actually already does, and just in general, like any multiprocessor, since I, I'm not going to put a date because that's going to be wrong. But for a very long time, they're all been single. Uh, threaded anyway, but they all run concurrently. And because uh, you're running multiple programs on your computer, even though it's, they can all be single threaded, there are many programs running at the same time. And versus parallel on the right. So the difference is that, again, concurrency means that many things are running at the same, in the same period of time, while parallelism means that two things can be happening in the exact same moment. If that, what that means is that, for example, these little dots represent uh, some instructions for this particular program, right? So here we have maybe the CPU runs the first two, and then it runs, decides that, oh, okay, it's, it can run the next two of the second program. I'll run that one, and I'll just like switch back and forth. And you won't really notice necessarily a difference in that two programs aren't literally running at the same time. Whereas in parallel, we are actually getting both each clock cycle of your CPU, it's running two instructions or multiple instructions at the same time. Or, and these don't even have to be on the same computer. Like, this could be two separate computers, like two laptops or a cluster of servers, for example. And that's, they've, you know, that's the way it's been done for a long time. You just buy more computers, buy more servers. All right, 
So let's get to it. Uh, first way to scale up the application to deal with HTTP bottlenecks is with this cluster module in NPM. Uh, not NPM, I'm sorry, Node, which you don't actually have to go to NPM for. So we can just do this with the cluster module again. Um, and it does this, uh, what it's actually going to do is basically just copy your server. Just take the program and just copy, a whole, make a bunch of copies, and there's going to be one process that's called the master, and it will just, by default, use a round robin scheduling algorithm, which just says, like, it'll do the first one, it'll, it, it, HTTP requests come in, like, and it'll just say the first one goes to the first one, uh, the first worker, the second one goes to the second worker, and just down the line and so on, and it'll just loop back around. And that's, it does okay for what we want to do. So let's just see in the code what that looks like, if I can get this to not explode. So here it is with a, uh, here's a basic express app on the left where you just have, uh, again, no, with no cluster. It's basically what we do in every other app we've done this, you know, in this boot camp. Um, where we have, you know, you just hit some endpoint here, like on line 12, uh, it just simulates some work, just like do some stuff and then sends it back, just, you know, process a bunch of routes. Pretty basic. And in our cluster, Uh, what we're doing is actually using this, we uh, require this cluster module. And then here, what we're doing is just going to say, oh, if the cluster is a master, it will do this cluster.fork and fork off a number of CPUs. And you can query for that by using the OS uh, parameters or just type it in manually. You can put as many as you want, but really there's, no, there's not really any benefit to scaling more than what's actually physically available. And then, if you're a worker process, you basically are just the HTTP server. So you're just going to do basically everything that was in the similar, in the um, uh, single-threaded app. So why do we want to do that? Just, uh, so here's the demo of that situation, right? So here, let's do npm run no cluster. Here's our single-threaded server, just like the server's listening. Great. So I'm going to be using a HTTP benchmarking utility called uh, Siege. Um, so it'll just simulate a bunch of concurrent connections coming in. So just running 100 concurrent users. Um, I already prepared a script, so save typing. Um, just run it for 10 seconds. You probably want to benchmark longer than 10 seconds, but essentially it's like, all right, that's kind of the performance we get for, say, your basic node server, right? So now if we do npm run with the cluster, okay, okay if you can type cluster, there you go. Okay, forking APCPU. So now you can see that it's actually um, copying that server and just running eight copies of it. And now over here, if we do the same test, 10 seconds, oh my God, it's eating my time. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. You can see the performance difference in having a single one on the left where the transaction rate, we're getting 448 and uh, transactions per second on the left on the single threaded, whereas with the um, eight, uh, forked of eight, you can get uh, almost like over three times performance. And it's a, I mean, you, you have to look at your specific app and the actual benchmark your actual app, but you get a lot better throughput on, well, not throughput technically, but um, yeah. I'm almost running out of time, so I should want to get to the other two uh, real quickly. Play. Right, so here's our other second bottleneck, is comput computationally expensive endpoints, where you just have some huge calculation here, and it might not even be like necessarily uh, uh, frequently hit in your uh, API, but once it hits it, then it's slowing everything down behind it. And it's, it just holds, off, uh, holds up like, everything on your server, if you have the compute on your HTTP server, as we're you know, in our naive case. So to, fix that, we're going to use something called child process. And what that does is, um, where is it, fork. Uh, I'll just show you the one that with fork. So basically, here's a slow computational endpoint. And here on this line, um, just save time, I'm not going to show you the normal version. It just, trust me, that there's the normal version of this. And uh, so we, we see that we just call the fork uh, fork function with the computation that we wanted to run. So instead of doing it on that, we just start a separate process. So, oops. 
kill that. Okay, hold on. No fork. No forks. Okay, so, so I, I know I'm out of time, but I just want to show you this last thing, man. Um, uh, you are all. You all follow? I'm dancing for okay, so that's with forks. Okay, now with forks. Okay, let's do it. With URL file. Same um, you can ask me after class about the details of the actual benchmark, but just to save time, we'll just do it. Ten seconds. So you can see on the left, once it hits a computation so endpoint and you only have one thread handling that. Uh, you're only processing 54 transactions, where on the right, you're able to process over oh, about 400. So, and it's really easy to do. I actually don't wanna, I was gonna do a demo, but I'm out of time right now, um, to show that actually, I just took the author workshop and literally just put it in the cluster and just like forked it off, and you can get the same like kind of performance if you benchmark that. Uh, server availability, again, there's, um, I'm not gonna demo it, but you can use the same cluster to listen, uh, register an event listener for any workers that kind of just crash unexpectedly, and when you detect that, you can just spin off another worker or forking off another um, worker so it can continue to handle your HTTP requests. So to go more faster than that, probably just buy more hardware, use a front-end server that faces the internet, like maybe Nginx or Apache or something that, actually, that does something maybe more sophisticated. Um, take advantage of multi-core. You can use child processes to call native libraries if you have more computationally expensive endpoints, whatever you want to do. It's going to depend on your use case, but there are options for you. So let's just leave it at that. But thanks.